Is Labor now calling for an independent inquiry into the government's decision to appoint Nigel Hadjikis to the building industry watchdog? Mr Hadjikis resigned from his almost half a million dollar a year job at the ABCC after he admitted breaching the Workplace Act. Joining me live for reaction to this is the CFMEU's Construction and General National Secretary, uh, Dave Noonan. He joins me from Melbourne. Uh, are you backing up these calls from Brendan O'Connor? Oh, look, I think clearly the public are entitled to know uh, what the uh, Workplace Relations Minister, Michaelia Cash, knew and when she knew it. Um, they're entitled to know if the Prime Minister knew, uh, what he knew and when he knew it. Um, and only uh, an independent inquiry is going to get to the bottom of that. Um, it's clear that there is more to this matter than has been revealed on the public record so far. Well, we haven't seen a response from the government so far uh, to that letter that Brendan O'Connor has sent, but it's necessary here. We've uh, seen the timeline from Michaelia Cash. Uh, she's explained it in the Senate, I believe. Isn't that enough? I think that the uh, answer that the Minister gave raised more questions than it answered. You see, the Minister told the Senate that she was um, aware of the fact that Mr Hatchkiss was accused of breaking the law. Um, and that uh, court proceedings had been initiated. In fact, she said she was aware of the, uh, the behaviour uh, that he subsequently pled guilty to. Mm. Now, um, uh, the proceedings were started by the union against Mr Hatchkiss in August of 2016. The minister says she knew in October 2016. Um, why didn't Mr Hatchkiss tell her? Um, did he, in fact, tell her? Um, in any event, uh, it had been reported in the media that the union had, had brought proceedings against Mr Hatchkiss, um, and yet, despite that, the government uh, proceeded uh, to put... Um, uh, ..giving him, uh, uh, as you said, a nearly half a million dollar a year taxpayer-funded job, a job which was supposed to um, mean that he would be independent and impartial in dealing with matters in the building industry. Um, well, clearly he wasn't, and we now know... Uh, that at the same time that that had happened, um, he knew he'd broken the law. There's been a bit of reaction yesterday to Brendan O'Connor's answer he gave on a Sunday agenda to Peter Van Onselen. He was asked about uh, the fines, the record fines that the CFMEU has been slapped with uh, $2.4 million for a blockade of Sydney's Barangaroo. Now, he says that under a Labor government, those fines would have been much less. This is not a good look, is it? it doesn't look good for Labor. It looks like it's beholden to the unions. Well, Labor can speak for itself, but let me say a couple of things about fines in the building industry. First of all, on the particular matter uh, you deal with, the union um, is discussing an appeal uh, on the quantum and the finding uh, with its lawyers, and I really can't say any more about that because the matter is um, under consideration for an appeal. Um, but I look forward to the day uh, when we see an employer find $2.4 million dollars uh, for the death of workers on sites. Uh, what we see is a law which racks up enormous fines for workers taking um, industrial action to defend their safety, their wages and their conditions. And those laws um, are much more harsh and draconian on building and construction workers mm. than any other industry. These aren't situations where there's criminal conduct, there's civil proceedings uh, taken uh, for... Uh, for uh, industrial action, which in any other country in the world would be perfectly lawful, mm. which in Australia, under the laws we've got at the moment, uh, unions and workers are punished for. And we've seen not just unions, we've seen um, over 500 individual workers fined okay. uh, because they've taken um, industrial action. David